I think we shouldn't be too pessimistic. We've done a lot of the thinking about this. We've done a lot of the analysis. There are now arguments that weren't there before. And in our case, in this country, we have a degree of transparency about our weapon systems we've never had before. I mean, in 2006, I published quite a lot of information about our weapon systems. This Trident Alternative Review publishes a lot more information. And, and actually, my own view is that it will be months before people fully understand what that review reveals. And it reveals some quite striking things, which will have to be challenged and are at the bedrock of the decisions that it has kind of enforced. For example, it says that it would take us 24 years to develop a nuclear weapons warhead for a smaller system. Now, I'm not in favour of building a smaller system. I'm not in the business of trying to persuade anybody that you can have nuclear weapons for comparatively small amounts of money. I, don't, I think that's a proliferator's charter. And I don't think it's a wise position for anybody who believes in disarmament and multilateral disarmament to be in. But the reason those who do favour that in the Liberal Democrat Party rejected it was because they were told it would take 24 years to develop a new warhead and then to develop from that a warhead that could be put on a different missile. I, I'm very sceptical about that. I mean, I'm tempted to ask, and I do ask my friends, why are we so worried about Iran developing a warhead if we, one of the most sophisticated and developed countries in the world, are going to take 24 years to develop a warhead. And it's a kind of rhetorical question. Um, and I suppose their answer to that would be that the Iranians would be happy with a less safe or secure warhead if they wanted to develop one. I don't know. I mean, I don't want to give them the answer. But it does seem to me counterintuitive that that is right. Um, and that's just one of a number of assumptions. I think they refer to them as planning assumptions that inform the kind of compulsory decision-making in this uh, that this report revealed that will need to be looked at very, very carefully and it will take some time to look at them. My own view is that this report will become very suspect after a period of analysis by people who have some degree of expertise and I intend to contribute to that process. But, but I, think there, I, I think my point is that there is a, there's a level of knowledge there is an interesting alliance now of people who have had responsibility for the weapons, who have, uh, together with people who have always been disarmers, there is a revelation, I think, of some of the weakness of some of the arguments that have supported the status quo. Um, we no longer hear arguments about status. Uh, and, and, and many of the other arguments about about how difficult it would be to train crews if we stop doing continuous at sea deterrence and a whole number of other things have disappeared. We're now down to a comparatively small suite of arguments which I think we need to engage with and we're better equipped to engage with.